Uh, welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, I hope you get something out of today. Um, individualized teaching, uh, multi-level, multi-subject, and now online, in-class, hybrid, co-modal, co the whole thing, it's all, yeah, this is what our reality is. So actually, um, this whole workshop has been designed around that. So I sent you guys out the survey, asked you what your needs were. I took the time as a teacher, as a consultant, as a whoever, um, to look at it, and I've kind of put together something uh, that I hope will at least uh, answer one of your questions or uh, concerns, challenges, needs, uh, and all that in that way. My name's Shanna. I teach uh, at New Horizons uh, for the Eastern Township School Board. I've been teaching here for probably about 15 years now, close to it. Uh, I do a little bit of ped consulting, a little bit of sanctions, lead tech teacher, uh, resource teacher, you name it, I do it. Uh, so uh, I have my hand in a little bit of everything. So I know a little bit about everything and uh, basically I'm a master of none of them. So uh, um, yeah, that's what you're getting for the background. I've always done individualized multi-level. I've never had the luxury of having a stand-up class of you know just teaching one uh, subject at a time. Well, subject, yes but not one level at a time. Uh, it's been a mixture of, you know, doing three or four levels, all, all of English or whatever. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of my background. Um, well, a little agenda I put together. This is EPC. Uh, I'm also part of the EPC committee. We work with Ekip Shock and the RSC, so Mark and Richard. Um, so this is brought to you by all of us. There you go. You'll, you have all of this. Uh, you can go click on websites later. Um, so today's agenda. Um, basically, I extracted the themes uh, from your realities and what you gave me from the survey. So I put that together a little bit. So we'll go over that. Um, I have the contact list that I started last year and resources that I started compiling last year. So I'll be sharing those with you. And but the bulk of this is going to be you guys sharing your ideas, your resources, your concerns, your realities, and things like that. Um, then what's next? And basically, today's goal is I hope you leave with a tool or strategy strategy that you can, you know, modify and put right into into your context right off, or at least find one good person to connect with. Those are kind of the two goals that I have. Um, for the day. So hopefully through discussions, you can find people who are, have similar uh, realities that you can uh, then be in contact with after. So that's what we're doing today. So this is basically the themes that I've extracted from the survey. And this is what I mean by individualized teaching and learning. Uh, it's all over the map, right? You guys mentioned out of all of you that filled it out, this stuff was all mentioned and I've even like put them all together like and and put them up. So um, big stuff, tracking, progression, follow-up and assessment, organization and planning and LMSs, learning needs, so special needs, other I needs, things like that. Engagement and motivation, super high uh, as well. And just your subject specific and course resources, materials and how to get through that. And then the things that you see on the side, I kind of extracted them a little bit because uh, they kind of fall under all of the categories and you can tackle them a little bit and all of it. Uh, so student attendance, life and work uh, gets in the way, uh, especially in individualized when you're trying to do everything. Uh, for a lot of us, we have the reality of continuous intake. That's a lovely thing. Um, it's great for students, great, you know, to be able to get people when they want to come to school and that, but it wreaks havoc on, uh, on the classrooms. Um, the context now, you have students in presence, some might be online, some might be comodal, like it's all over the place as well. And at the same time, you're juggling multi-levels, multi-subjects, a whole bunch of competencies, uh, you name it, you're juggling it. So obviously time is going to be an issue. 
And if we round it back to the student again, because it's mostly the students that, it's always the students that are at the heart of it, their autonomy and independence, um, which we know in adult ed, um, uh, we have a good group of students who, who really need work on the autonomy and independence thing. So basically that's, that's what I got out of the survey in a nutshell. So this is uh, individualized teaching is basically uh, teaching and learning on the fly is what I call it. Uh, we're constantly changing to meet our students' needs, our teaching needs, and basically the continually changing context that goes around us. Um, this whole session is kind of, it came out of me being wanting to connect more. Usually when you're an individualized teacher, you're in your little silo. Um, so uh, me wanting to get out and talk to more teachers who had my contacts and could understand the realities of individualized teaching because when you get to teach a whole class from A to Z, uh, it's very different. And um, you guys were, basically if you're in the individualized and you've been there for a while, you're probably pretty much superstars and you're all doing some absolutely fabulous things, creating, using strategies, tools, and resources. And they're probably not perfect, but they're definitely worth sharing um, because they will inspire, they'll motivate other teachers, and they just give people a place to start because sometimes they haven't gotten to that part of, you know, in their teaching or in their courses or whatever. So that's what this is really designed to do to get people connected and sharing. So to start with, what I created was the contact list. Uh, you don't have to click on it, Mark. Uh, most of you know what it is. If you're not on it, you can go click on it later and put your name on it. It's designed so that you can put your name, your email address, the subject areas that you teach in, and when you put your name on the list, it means that you're willing to have other people contact you and share resources. Um, so we have about 50 names on there now. So, and they're from pretty much every subject area. So best advice I can give you is use that list. If you're looking for something or you're having a problem or whatever, go down through the list, find the people who have stuff that's similar to, that you think would be able to and send them a quick email. They're all willing to share. That's why their names are there. No one, it's been, I've no, we don't add names um, and most people are doing it themselves. So um, it's really people who do wanna share. So you've got a lot of resources there. The next thing that we did, what I did was create an individualized Google folder. And with the themes in it, there are, but some ideas and tricks and tips and different resources per each theme. I started doing that last year, added some more uh, for this, and hopefully um, you will add some more to it, things that you're willing to share, throw them in there so that there's a bank of resources. Um, this seems to be a pretty difficult thing in our little uh, adult ed. I think just in the teaching profession, just sharing stuff is uh, pretty hard for us. We tend to be perfectionists and tend to like things uh, things to be perfect before we share things. And it doesn't always get that way. I don't know. I've never been able to perfect anything, honestly. Like I try it once, I use it, I modify it a little bit and then I'm on to the next thing. And I, and I know there's stuff that I wanna do with it, but I, you know, it's, it's good enough. So then I tend to go on, but then I tend to, well, I'll be like, well, it's not really where I want it to be. So, oh, what should I share? But yes. Um, so there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Um, you'll be able to peruse it later, or I might take you through it depending on how you choose to do it. There's also a Kip Shuck uh, who has a compilation of resources on there. I know in math, it's quite well populated in English and some of the other subject areas, not as much, but hopefully um, it will get there and there'll be more stuff. And there are, for those of you looking for pretests, especially in math, there is a lock section on there with pretests in it. So that was another question that was asked at some point in, in the survey. So that's where you can get some pretests. And I'm sure if you contacted teachers in your subject area, uh, they'd be willing to share pretests with you as well. Um, past APCs, so past sessions like this, 
they're recorded and the resources are always there. So there's the link to that. So if you get nothing else out of today, you get do get a bunch of stuff that you can go through and there's quite a bit of stuff there. It's up to you to decide how you wanna run this. Um, because it's this is for you based on your needs, your challenges, your what you want. I'm um, basically, it was split down the middle, uh, whether we stayed as a whole group and did some stuff or we went out into breakout rooms by your choice of topics or themes or subject areas or whatever. So now is the more difficult one for if you, well, you guys are all teachers and you know how hard it is. I had to come to this point and say, okay, I'm just gonna have to fly by the seat of my pants now because uh, I can't just structure it and have it all nicely done out like I would really like to because then I might not be meeting the needs of everybody and giving choice to students uh, is another thing. So uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a, a modeling choice and flexibility and uh, catering to multiple needs. So um, I think maybe we'll do this by show of hands, raise your hand if you want to go into breakout rooms based around certain topics. And we'll figure out how we'll do that later if that is the consensus. Yeah. yeah, so cur so currently we have three people in motivation and uh, two people for English. So may I suggest that Abby, I'll put you in with the motivation crowd and I'll, I'll, um, I'll have Nancy and Megan uh, with English. That's okay. Perfect. That works. Okay. So All I'll right, so right we'll now. open them up. You can go and choose which ones you want to go in. We'll give you a minute to kind of whatever and then I'll start here with Okay. The rest of the group. So All right. Okay. So we're perfect. So for those of you who remained here, my idea was to uh, go by the themes and we'll kind of pick one to start in and I'll show you what I have. And then we can, uh, you can ask questions or throw out a challenge or whatever, and we can do it that way. Those are the themes um, that we had. Uh, is there anywhere you would like me to start? Just shout out, open your mic, shout out. You can leave your mics on and if there's not too much background noise and just chat away, I'm good with that. Um, I don't know if everybody's in agreement with this, but maybe starting with a tracking progression, follow-up and assessment would be an interesting one as it might actually. Perfect. I don't mind starting there. All right. So I just clicked on the folder that was the uh, for the... Um, for the sharing. So under here, like I said, I have folders and I have a little bit under everything. Your individualized teaching, teacher contact list is in here. So you have access to everything in here. I'm so, really sorry, my internet is really bad, so it's quite slow. So if I go under tracking, progression and follow up, and if I'm lucky, it won't jump around on me and I'll actually be able to get into it. Um, I have a couple of things. So inside there, what I did was I created a little Google document uh, and then I have some ideas in there. So yeah, I've struggled with tracking uh, for a very long time <laughs> in this. And basically it's, it's something that's constantly evolving. Um, and I found that I was tracking in a couple of different ways. So I was, you had my own teacher tracking system, which evolved over time and depended on how, what I was teaching. Um, I had the student centered tracking, which was, you know, more based on them and how they can track and, and that, and then it's a combination of the two together um, that, uh, that really kind of, they have to go in sync to be able to track. Uh, track students. Then you can add in components of, you know, in your planning and having an LMS and there's different features in that that can help you track as well. So I guess my, to answer the question, there's, there's lots of different ways you can go out, go, go about and do it. Honestly, the simplest way that I've found in all honesty is to, to create a really good course outline for your students. That's their roadmap. 
and you use that to track them. And within that, um, you fall into uh, assessment and stuff. So I'm just going to click on the uh, at the bottom here that start with simple. And again, like I said, my internet is really, really bad right now. There are centers under construction, and I think there's been walls that have put been put up that have uh, really. Uh... You want me to share my screen again, Shannon? I guess so, since yeah, okay. it was working, but now so. All right. Let me get there. I will stop sharing. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. And here's the other reality of teaching and learning. At least you do have the link. So if you um, if you go into it, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Basically, this is a it's just an outline created. It's my one of my online teachers who uses SOFAD. And she's gone through SOFAD and identified which pages and activities she wants the, the student to do. And basically, you know, we can't correct everything. So we don't correct everything. There's an answer key at the back of SOFAD. It's not the greatest. We want to get away from it. But you know what? Time is time. And we don't always have, uh, have the time to do that. So you use what you've got. So, and in there, there are, but there are certain tasks in there, the more culminating tasks that are done in red. And these are the ones that she evaluates and she gives the students feedback on. Um, so in this way, she knows, well, she can ask the student, have you done this, 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 and this, but to check and make sure that they know their stuff, it's the culminating tasks that get used. So basically, um, the teacher gives this off to the student, they share the document, it gets checked off and she can kind of uh, track where the students are if they do it, or, you know, that's, that's another thing. But like, this is a simple, simple way. And because each student has their own, it's individualized, it's shared with the teacher, the teacher can go in at any time, she can check in. Um, and, you know, it's a pretty simple way of doing it. It's got all the, the students know what they have to do and what they have to hand in. And it takes a lot of, a lot of the responsibility is put on the student. And then we do the check-ins at the important points. So that's one simple way that actually it works pretty well in all honesty, uh, in an individualized setting when you're targeting them all anyways. It also allows you to know where students are. So uh, you can you can quickly flip through them, like when you're talking with the students and looking at them, and you know when you're you're jotting down where they are, and they go, oh, I've got like five or six that are in an, a, in a particular area. So then I, I'll do a mini lesson uh, today for 20 minutes on this particular thing to get them prepared for the next part or whatever. Any, I mean, there's no like if you were coming here hoping for a magic bullet, like, yeah. It, it's really like it depends what you teach how you teach uh you know what you what what tools you have available too there's tons of you know high tech uh like in in moodle say or in teams and that there's like the notebooks and there's tracking systems and you can put in things you know one assignment doesn't open until another one's done and completed and tracking like you can get super fancy too but you can always, and you can do this on pen and paper as well. Like that's how for years and years and years, that's how I tracked. I had a student binder, new student came in. They got a copy of this. I got a copy of this. It was in there. I did check, check, check. It was easy. It was done. When I met with them, I just updated mine and both the student and I always knew where they were. So this can be done digitally. It can be done in paper too, which is really nice depending on, you know, because guess what? internet doesn't always work. So having the paper copy is sometimes even better. Do you guys have any questions uh, planning and tracking, George? I don't know if I answered your question directly or not, or if you have something else, but. No, this, this is, this is kind of like what I thought. And I, I, I think it's just practical. That is a template and it can be actually shared with some of our teachers at the MSB as well. Yeah. Uh, and essentially it's, I mean, tracking is, can be as complex or as 
simple as we want to make it, but the simple, the better for the students as well, right? Well, and this provides a yeah. real, yeah, exactly. This provides a really good roadmap for the students. They know exactly what they have to do. It even gives them the hours that it should take them to complete it. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's very simplistic, but at the same time, it really does work. Like it's got, as a teacher, you can't spend all your time correcting everything. Like that's just, you can't. So you have to pick and choose. The other thing, I don't know, I don't know how many of you give uh, marks uh, in class, like actual number of marks. Like I've never, I'm, I've never given my students an actual mark in my class, never. The only time they see a number mark is in their, in their exams, even on their pretests, I never give them a, an actual mark. I always give them the feedback because basically as soon as I give them a mark, some of them will go, I'll have the students who go, ah, 61's good enough. Uh, the other ones that'll have like a 99 and go and like have a fit because, well, what can I do better? What's, what's wrong? Why, why didn't I get a hundred? Why didn't I, whatever. So it's always comments. It's always, this is what you did super well. This is what you need to improve on. Um, you know, in a pretest, I will give them a range. I'll say, oh, you're in the 80s or you're in the 70s or you're barely passing or whatever, so that they know, you know, roundabout. But I, I want them, as soon as you give a number, they tend to focus on the number and not the, not, not the actual feedback. So yeah, I've never had a problem with it. Students have never, it's just, that's the way it is and that's the way it is. And I, I honestly, they rarely ask me for a mark too. And they actually focus on what I said, you know, they did really well. And then what are the things they need to improve on? Is there anybody else have something that they want to address? No? All right, let's go under, uh, let's go under, organization and planning, just because it's linked to that. So in here, it's the same, same type of deal um, for planning, how you organize the course. Uh, in an individualized classroom, you need to have some sort of mechanism where students can continue themselves because you can't always constantly be handing out stuff to each individual students. So you do have to learn to, well, it's okay if they look, go ahead and do parts of another assignment. Like you kind of have to let loose a little bit like that, because otherwise you're going to spend all your time, like handing stuff out and checking exactly where a student is. And like, it just, it doesn't work when you're doing multi-level, multi-whatever, like it just doesn't work. So taking the time up front to organize your course, figure out your course outlines, figure out the major assignments, and that can save you a whole lot of time. And then you have more time to like put into additional, you know, little one-on-ones with students or getting additional materials rather than the regular stuff. So using a learning management system is kind of key. And again, it can be, it can be super simple. Like I use Moodle, we're a Google, a Google uh, school board too. So it's between Moodle and Google. So everything is on Google but I present it through Moodle and Moodle is just like a nicer way because Google Classrooms doesn't work for me in an individualized setting because it, the way it's structured, I didn't like it. So we ended up with, we were lucky enough, we ended up with Moodle and then we just structure things uh, uh, on the thing. I, I have, you know, in my math teachers have like one landing page in Moodle and it has all of the different levels in it. And then it will take you to another Moodle course where you know all the sec four stuff's there for whichever course that they're doing and, and stuff like that i'm i'm assuming teams works the same kind of the same thing in google classroom it's whatever works for you whatever your school board has whatever but i mean basically it's a replication of my non-tech filing system like that's that's basically what it's a replication of i had my binder of my master binder before and i've just basically put my master binder online so your master binder still works like if that's what you're still going to because you have the luxury of doing that then great um it has taken me a long time to get the stuff up 
online like by the time you scan it and you get it and or whatever you know or you get the get the links in and that it is uh but start somewhere put the main things up like I I'm still I don't even have a course complete yet like that's the all the honest to goodness you know truth truth reality is is that even though I and I was ahead of the game I've been doing this for a while uh I still don't have everything up there I still have stuff in my drawers that I haul out and you know send and take a picture of and send off and whatever so so yeah planning an organization like I said uh creating study plans for the students giving them goals I usually add in the goal of when I want them if you saw at the top of the thing there was a a, a set date for an estimated pretest date um because we try and get them to okay let's estimate how much time this is going to take you how many hours are you going to devote to English in a week okay if you're going to devote 10 and this is a 25 hour course then you know that's another important thing in multi-level um multi-level uh thing is getting students to set their goals because if they don't set their goals uh they could it's easy to lose track of them and it's easy it's easy for us to lose track of how long they've been there so yeah when i hand out the course outline we sit down and we estimate based on you know usually usually if it's a totally new student i'll you know take two or three weeks to kind of observe them and figure out you know what level they're actually at because that's a whole other ball game right of students aren't actually at the level that they're in and then you know what their work ethic is like and things like that and then i'll say okay well based on this and the hours that you devote and whatever let's set this as a date it might be realistic you know a realistic date so um creating study plans uh that will help you in the organization and tracking uh providing them with the student friendly rubrics the exemplars and things like that to keep them on track and have them know exactly what they're supposed to be doing uh very helpful and i had been in the midst of doing a lot of self-correcting assignments so with moodle and things like that and google forms and forms and things like that you can actually create like these things and then they can be self-correcting and they can give feedback uh refer students to you can put links in to refer students to you know uh, pages that they can extra exercises if they got it wrong and things like that so when you can get into the auto corrected uh, quizzes and assignments and different things like that you're still providing them with you know information based on the the answers they gave in that but it's not up it's not you're not doing it individually it's the system that's doing it takes a good bit of time to create behind but it saves you a whole lot of time moving forward so obviously you're not going to do that with every single assignment but you know some of those more crucial assignments that you think oh i don't really want to grade it myself but i really think it's important that i that they they know these things so i'm going to do that for that that's kind of what i do so i might have like a check in assignment that is self correcting like uh self correcting with my feedback integrated um on it at certain key points because if you did that with everything you you you'd make yourself crazy um a lot of the stuff was the technology uh depending on what technology uh the students we think that they're technologically savvy but not really not not in the sense for learning applications and things like that so a lot of centers and like my center i was lucky enough i designed uh what we call technology for learning and all of our students have to do a, a little com mini computer course with me and basically i introduced them to all the different technologies that they they might be seeing in their different classes so we go through you know we go through getting on the, the website uh, getting their emails getting into moodle using google google meet because that's what we're switching to now uh we go through you know how do you use google docs how do you use google drive how do you scan how do you do signatures because a lot of them are going to need to do that to hand in uh different papers and things like that so um we've taken that out of the regular teachers online teachers and people who have to do hybrid situations and we're putting it on somebody else to do it so that has been i know our teachers have 
been super happy with that because they don't have to teach them how to use their, how to get into their email and get onto this and get onto that. They can start, you know, teaching them like, say, sign up on the Moodle account and get into this class and they're, they're already familiar with it. So um, that's, that's, that's another thing that's uh, important to have. If you don't have that one, then you have to kind of structure your first things in class to get them comfortable with that. Yes, Sarah. Shana, how long does it last, this uh, orientation in there? And uh, how do you do it when the student join, let's say one month or two months later, because they don't join uh, at the same time? Basically what happens when a student registers with us, the first person that they have to come see is me. I give them a quick crash course in there for their email. Uh, I get them onto Moodle and how to use the Chromebooks that are in the classrooms. Uh, get them started with all of that so that when they get to their first class, um, they at least have some working knowledge and the that teacher doesn't have to go through the basics. After that, um, all the other stuff like working with Google and doing scanning and doing all of that, I, uh, I'll pick uh, a couple of days in a month where I'll get all the students who haven't done it. I keep the list and I just go grab them out of other classes. So that's the way it's working at our school. Um, mm -hmm. Does it work great? No, because it worked better last year. I was more on the ball last year and actually got to students in a timely manner. This year, we're already November, what, second today? And yeah, there's not one student in this building that has fully completed the course. I've done bits and pieces, but, you know, and that's the reality. That's my reality this year. Uh, last year, I was Is super good at it. Pardon? Sorry, sorry. Is it because of the number of students? More students or more? Uh, no, it's just we've had closures. We've had this. The students are on class trips because, you know, COVID's whatever. There's tons of stuff going on. I've got meetings. It's just our schedules have been crazy. Like just life has gotten in the way. Yeah. Um, every time it seems that I schedule it, something pops up and, you know, we, we were shut down for two days and had to go into online teaching for two days because of all the construction. So there, that's that one gone. So now by the time I can schedule another one, well, you know, and that's the reality, right? And especially in an individualized classroom, that's, uh, you know, when you're trying to get students here, there and everywhere, because you're trying to meet everybody's needs, that's, that's the way it is. Um, if you don't have the luxury of doing that, create yourself a playlist that you can send the students to um, and say, you know what, the first couple of days, I want you to familiarize yourself with the tools. Here's some videos and, and different things. Here's a playlist of, how to use this or how to use that. And that will, uh, that, that will help you out immensely uh, in that. I totally agree, but the, uh, the major challenge of being sitting this year is really uh, their autonomy. It comes to their engagement and autonomy right now, just to be willing to learn those tools. And sometimes they get on their phone and they get distracted by music, by whatever you want in there. I agree. And that's a whole other one. So if we want to skip to that one, we can go and look at motivation and things yeah, like that. Honestly, yeah. that's another thing. Yeah. If you find out how to motivate students and get them, you know, to stay on task all the time and do that, you let me know, please. Uh, yeah. And be autonomous, right? We have some students that are super autonomous, super good. We never have to, you know, like they're handing stuff in and whatever. And others, you just like, I just want to bang my head against the wall and go, I've tried this. I've tried that. I've, I've done, you know, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so engagement and motivation onto that. Can I, can I uh, do a shameless plug? Mm -hmm. No, it just made me think about, we, we built this website when the pandemic hit. And if you're looking for, you know, instead of doing all of the research and, oh, I want them to learn about this and learn about that, we vetted consultants, all of us, uh, all of these different resources here. So if you want students to learn about Google Meet, you click on Google Meet and you have the resources here. Perfect. So and Mark, you're yeah. in charge of putting that in uh, PDA a la carte on the slide. With I shall do the that. Other Did I you talk to the students, Mark? I mean, it's it's open to everybody. It's self-directed. 
So you're welcome to use it with students, with yourselves, whatever the case may be. It's it's it was made for teachers, but it's not it's it's pretty easy to do. Like it's self-directed and you can just go on there. You can take the link and and you know put it into another document of your own. It's all you know, it's all creative comments. There's no problem. You can exploit it as best you you see fit. Okay, where are we going? Engagement, uh, motivation. engagement motivation. So this is a shout out to a lot of the stuff that's here. Uh, and this one is from an old APC, Sarah Chanette. I don't know if she's here because I can't see my whole screen. Um, okay. She is on your list of um, individualized teachers. So uh, definitely a teacher's brain you would like to pick. But basically what she does is Motivation Monday. So every Monday, easy, well, easy peasy. She has her students um, write in what their goal is for the week. And it's in a Google form or a Teams form. She has both of them. I've just put the Google one here because that's the one that I had, but there's a link to her uh, stuff on the link to organization. There's a link to the, it links you back to the APC and all the stuff's there. Um, basically she has the students fill out a form. What do they want to accomplish that week? And it compiles in an Excel sheet too, right? So mm -hmm. then she has a whole track of, and it's and it's like, uh, did you complete your stuff from last week? Uh, use this, can you, what are you gonna do? What, what, how's your, if you go down through, there's a whole bunch yep. of stuff. Um, but uh, the, the date, what course you're working on, did you reach your goal from last week? Yes or no, what are the reasons? And how are, how are you, what's your goal for this week? Be specific and how motivated you are. And so by having the students fill this out, they always know to go to this link. She just gives the link once. She doesn't have to do anything else. It tabulates it in an Excel sheet and she can just check her Excel sheet and see where people are and what they're doing. And then she has a reason to check in with them. She bumps this up further and actually meets with the student on the Monday. She takes a, a bit of time, meets with the student. But even if you didn't meet with the student, um, you would have what they expect to accomplish during the week and you could check in at a little later date. So um, yeah, so the motivation and autonomy, uh, something you need to build. Students, we don't, they, a lot of, for a lot of our students, it's not, um, it's not, it's not innate. Right, we have to teach them. So that's where your planning comes in. That's where your organization comes in. That's where your goal setting comes in. That's where you know the tracking of the which assignments absolutely have to be handed in. Where are my my important check ins? That will you know when a student and and when you're there helping them to set the goals and say, hey, look, uh, it's been three weeks. I haven't seen anything from you. Enough time to sit down. I expect this. And I, I do like some of my students that get mad at me, but I'm like, you're not going on break until this is done. And they know they're not going on break till it gets done. So um, yeah, I mean, when you have that rapport with your students and, and whatever, and they, they tend to, they tend to, you know, after a while they will do it, but like, yeah, sometimes it's, it's really, and sometimes it's like, you know what? I can't, I can't get it out of you. So I, we're lucky here. We have some, we have some other people who work with students in that. So we'll send them off and say, okay, can you see what's going on? And we'll see if we can get them moving forward. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes like we've got 50 students in our class. We do not have the time to, you know, we try, but there comes a point when like, I've tried all my little tricks. Well, then I need to, send them off somewhere else for a little bit they can all they're always welcome back and welcome to be in the class and working but at a certain point in time otherwise you're just going to wear yourself out like that's that's the cruel reality of it like yes sarah is this sheet shared with the student yes this is for the student to complete the student completes it you'll make it you would make a copy of this file it's okay. there uh, you make a copy of it and then you get the share link for the student. 
Yeah. So yeah. they can measure and they have this uh, follow-up every week if they want. Or yeah. Every yeah, they can use the same link every week. You can send it out to them. You can post it on a page. And measure can... their progress as they go. Yeah. Yep. So in the learning needs folder, I'll just tell you what's in there quickly. Um, there's stuff for read write that I created, uh, both for the teachers and for the students. Um, there's posters in there, there's presentations, it has all links to uh, a text help uh, videos. It's done really well, pretty much play on May. Uh, under the learning needs links, there is um, stuff to uh, uh, Avi just finished. Um, translating the guide for ensuring consistent and effective support for adult learners with special needs is just coming out. Uh, there'll be another APC, which you'll see in December on that. And there's an intervene to succeed document, which is designed to understand adult learners needs and offer support and intervention. So there's that in there for that. Uh, I am working on this dossier personally in my center. If uh, when I when I put everything together, I will put more stuff in here. So come back because there will be more stuff that will get put in here as things come out. And uh, if you can back up to the main one again, I think that covers. So there's, as you can see, basically there is something in there for pretty much, I think I went down through everybody's challenge and everybody's needs and put something, there is at least something in there that might pique your curiosity. Um, we have scheduled, if you want to come back and share again, we have scheduled another one in January. So that, that will be a go. Um, it could be on a particular theme, on a particular topic. Um, we can do that. You can just send me an email. I'll be happy to, uh, you guys all have my email, I think, because I sent out stuff and it's on here as well at the end. Um, we can arrange, you know, uh, a couple of things uh, that way. Um, there's also, if you're interested in creating um, some integrating technology and digital media with teacher-led instruction, there's a blended learning project going on. Um, it provides you with four working sessions, time to create, implement, and network with some teachers. There's a couple of spots available, so you can email me if you happen to be interested in that. In that. It's really, uh, you know, looking at, uh, it's playing with purpose. So like, yeah, we want to get students interested in things and start using technology, but in a purposeful way. Uh, and then, like I said before, uh, uh, there'll be an APC on December 5th. And it's the document that Avi uh, translated uh, for supporting adult learners with special needs. So it's kind of uh, uh, basically the guidelines that are kind of pulled from ministerial documents and what's supposed to be there um, uh, in that way. So that will be on December 5th. And uh, I think that's pretty well it. Uh, I want to thank you for coming. I hope you at least uh, got one good resource out of it and maybe uh, went on to the um, contact list and can find somebody to connect with. Um, all right, well, thank you very much and uh, have a great evening. <laughs>